Hey guys, a couple new things. Um, I'm working on a pretty complex project and uh, I've decided to learn uh, the Eagle CAD software. Um, Element 14 and Jeremy Bloom uh, do an excellent job. Um, I don't know what I would have done without them. Um, learning the Arduino and uh, uh, the development environment. Um, and the uh, t on the uh, tutorials on the Eagle CAD software. Uh, with the complexity of this board, I'm not comfortable doing it on Vero board or prototype board. Um, it's actually going to be a, a Christmas present. It's a one-off clock. Um, and what I'm doing right now is uh, I'm getting my components just laid out in uh, Eagle. Um, so I'm kind of I'm dealing with the learning curve, but I'm, I'm coming along pretty good. You got to think ahead a lot, um, but this is going to be a one-off clock in many many ways. First of all, um, all of my LED segments I'm going to uh, create myself out of LEDs, uh, an array of four by five for my digits. Um, uh, but what's really uh, what I think is really unique is instead of using a oscillator or a uh, real-time clock chip, and I did not want to use the Arduino's internal timer because I've got too many other routines and functions going on. So what I did is uh, did the calculations, and I have made a um, simple uh, oscillator with a 555 timer. Um, you can see my mouse, I'll just kind of explain this real quick. Um, it's hard to find 4.8K resistor, so I'm using uh, a 4.7 and a 100. Uh, so this is a network right here, uh, 4.8K with these two, 4.8K with these two, the tops to VCC, uh, the bottom of the network is to the positive side of this. Um, uh, one microfarad cap tied to ground and uh, the circuit uh, the output uh, which will go to an interrupt pin on the Arduino is a absolutely perfect 100 Hertz um, so I'm testing that out now and uh, I've got it breadboarded like I said very simple but for something as volatile uh, I'd really like to get everything um, there's going to be a lot of logic chips on this board, but especially with this clock and everything, I think I'm going to have Eagle uh, do a custom board. But anyway, there's the 555 timer, the resistor network, and the cap. And the orange wire is my clock signal, 100 hertz, uh, going to interrupt zero, or pin two. So all this is doing is, uh, actually there's a lot of code in my sketch. Uh, let's see, where are we at? Here we go. Um, a lot of this stuff is uh, logic functions for my segments and uh, manually setting the time and uh, there's going to be other sensors and stuff on it too and then the LCD code. Uh, but Right now I'm just testing the core of it. Um, I'm just using basic Arduino libraries. I'm not using any fancy interrupt libraries. I'm just using a uh, interrupt clock int on uh, interrupt zero, and I'm having that call a uh, a function down here um, called clock counter, and I'm doing it on the rising signal. Um, so counting to 100 hertz, I'm going to have uh, 100 rising signals per second and the interrupts uh, the interrupt pin will catch every one of those and since it's a very stable 100 Hertz it uh, it's kind of a unique way to do it without a real-time chip or a crystal oscillator um, so basically I'm counting 100 rising 
uh, square waves, rising edges, keeping count, and then incrementing my seconds, minutes, and hours. And uh, so far, it seems to be keeping up with my computer's real-time clock. I went to let it run overnight and uh, see if I need to make any adjustments. Uh, best way would probably be software adjustments. But uh, I'm outputting over here my master clock. It counts to 100 and resets. Um, it's getting that from the interrupt, from the oscillator. Um, so as you can see, it's keeping almost perfect time right now. Um, I've been running it for about eight minutes. Um, I've got it counting days too. It'll do day of the week, and it's going to put this in temperature. Um, there will be uh, a temperature sensor circuit um, in the sketch. And then it's going to control. Uh, I've got uh, five quad AND gates and a ton of FETs um, to control my hour uh, LED custom LED segments. And uh, but anyway, I'll put the schematic up in the description and uh, maybe some example code. Um, this would be a good project for anybody wanting to do this without buying a real-time clock module. Um, while you'd have to write some algorithms to keep track of the year and account for leap years and stuff like that, and daylight savings, uh, all that stuff, if all you need is a, a basic clock, uh, seconds, minutes, hours, days, and days of the week, uh, this is excellent. And uh, maybe in my next video I'll have more of this done and I'll know uh, what the accuracy is. I'm going to let this run for about 12 hours and uh, weigh it against my real-time clock. Um, I do have an oscilloscope on the way. And uh, what I plan to do is a, uh, I'm going to tune into a, a shortwave band frequency that puts out a, uh, a pulse that even uh, GPS satellites use to calibrate. Um, it's a clock pulse on a very specific frequency. And what I'm going to do is, uh, it's a dual channel scope, so I'm going to compare uh, what's coming from Denver, Colorado uh, transmission on one channel and compare that to my uh, clock signal here and just see how accurate it is but uh, anyway that's how to uh, um, build an oscillator with a 555 timer with just four components and attach that to an interrupt and you could use any frequency that you wanted I just uh, I chose 100 uh, because it was easily divisible and uh, it wasn't that many interrupts to uh, try to catch. I mean, I know I'm dealing with a 16 megahertz clock, but uh, uh, that just seemed to work out well. And so far, it seems to be working. Uh, so thanks for watching.